Hey, Paul, congratulations on winning this month's 11 Second Club with your entry. Um, beautiful 2D work. My name is Dana Bodeway Mathon, and I've been an animator for 14 years. Um, I am currently a freelancer, and I've been uh, mentoring for Animation Mentor for seven plus years. Uh, and I also uh, teach classes at Northeastern University in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. I'm originally from Toronto, and uh, you can see more of my stuff at killerjellybean.com. I've got my demo reel up there if you'd like to have a look at that. The other projects that I've worked on in the past, um, I've uh, worked on a little bit of everything. Feature films, commercials, television shows, game cinematics, you name it. Um, so I'm going to give you some feedback on your shot today, and um, I just want to start um, by saying, first of all, what beautiful um, drawing work that you've done here. Um, I, I love the uh, character designs. Um, the, uh, the line work is beautiful. You've got some uh, beautiful fabric lines in there on the both characters. Um, the uh, in-betweening looks very smooth. Uh, what else? It's just, uh, it, it's beautiful to look at. Um, the style is, is really, really appealing. It's a very intense shot, very intense acting, and you've done that really well also. There's a, definitely a lot of tension between the two characters that you bring through in the performance. Very nice. So um, I have a few notes that I've... Uh, written down so that I wouldn't forget anything. Um, let's just play through with the audio first and then I will talk about my notes for you. You killed him! No, I did not. I gave him life. Okay, I'm going to move this onto my other screen so I can do some drawing on here if I want to. Okay. All right. You killed him! No, I did not. I gave him life. The main thing that I feel is lacking a little bit um, in this scene is, in, is uh, texture. So you have a lot of really nice poses um, and very nice uh, movement. And you're hitting all of the main beats. But I feel like if you had worked in a little bit more um, secondary gesture into the character's performance that uh, you could add a little bit more texture to it. So one of the things that I'm talking about uh, is with her, you him. No. Um, maybe right before she uh, backs off when she's right here in, in full frame, um, if she, you know, she's obviously very stunned and upset um, so her initial reaction could be, no, you know, like, oh my God, no, you know, and, and a little tight, small head shake with the wide eyes um, would uh, really help to get more texture in there, but it would also increase the amount of tension, it would increase the amount of disbelief that this character has going on. Um, you him. No. And then after she hits the wall, um, she's got a, a very still moment here where you could do some short little eye darts uh, back and forth um, as you know as if she's sort of looking from from at him from one eye to the other kind of thing she's sort of searching for answers you get this sense of her mind is racing um, if the eyes dart a little bit you get you know just back and forth one time do do would probably be enough um, but that is another way of layering in a little bit of texture that just adds some um, some extra flavor um, and tiny little beats. Um, it gives it a, uh, another layer of complexity when you have that in there. Now, I, I think that it's great that you have um, these really big moments because of the intensity of what's going on in the shot. So I don't think you need to add too much of that stuff, but a little bit would just really give it some um, a little bit of extra something something, you know? It would intensify the emotion as well, besides adding texture to the shot. It would really intensify the emotion. 
You killed him. No, I did not. And for him, he could use one eye dart as well. Um, when he first does this turnaround, no, I did not. I think it's great that his eyes are kind of in the middle. He looks a little bit, you know, crazy eyes. He's not really focused on anything. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's living in his own head. And I think that's perfect for kind of mad scientist sort of look. But then as he's turning around to face her, right before he turns to face her, if he darted his eyes uh, more to look right at her, um, right before he turns around, Again, it's a quick little movement. It's one little bit of texture. It's going to also turn his attention from the mad scientist in his head to her. And of course, this is really upsetting for her that he starts coming for her. His focus goes to her right at the very end of the shot, but the whole time he's turning around, he, he's not really focused on anything. So I think um, showing that change of thought process where he's at the beginning, he's lost in his own head because of this thing he's just done. Um, and he's really focused on that. But then it's clear by the end of the shot he's, you know, reaching for her and, and he's coming, you know, he's changed his direction towards her. So if you get the eyes darted towards her right before he turns towards her, it gives us that moment of seeing his thought process changing. So we get that he's looked at her now and now he's going to go and uh, talk directly to her. Um, I think um, the lip sync in general, probably on both characters, um, you could emphasize the shapes just a little bit more. Um, I think you're hitting everything okay, and, and it's, it's all there, and it reads, but um, given the intensity of the emotion and, and the way that they're speaking, um, a little bit more emphasis on the shapes would really help to push what the characters are feeling it would and and it would really emphasize the emotion behind the words um, and the uh, the intensity of the way that they're speaking you killed him no i did not i gave him life so it's really just a matter of pushing it a little bit more weight shift wise um, you can get a lot of extra emotional involvement in the character from head to toe by um, emphasizing the weight shifts a bit more. So um, what it does is it really helps to connect the character to the lower body. So everything that's down there off screen that we can't see. Um, if you use the weight shifts a little bit more, it helps us to feel that lower body being more emotionally involved in what's happening in the performance. So um, as she backs up, if she had a little down up going towards the wall, that would really help us again, you know, to feel that that lower body involvement. But then also, as she's coming up into the wall, if she ends in an upward motion as she hits the wall, um, that would also increase the feel of her being backed up against the wall. And, and the fact that she's backing away, but she hit the wall, she can't go any further. So she tries to, she's almost trying to push into the wall more, you know. So that would, would really give her even more of a sense of trying to escape, you know. And then the weight shift, the down up weight shift would just really help to increase her emotion overall but instead of just going straight back. And, and the reason for that, like I said, is because she would be uh, involving the lower body in the emotion more. And um, when you're uh, an actor, engaging your entire body in the performance is so important. Um, it is what make, gives you credibility as that character because your whole body is emotionally involved. Um, if you're at the theater and you see a background character who is standing there uh, obviously not physically engaged, it really takes the audience right out of the scene. It, it makes everything feel less um, it makes everybody feel less empathetic. You're not getting, the audience is not going to believe in the scene as much. And it's the same thing with animation. And even in film, if you have an actor that is uh, doing a, you know, a, a medium shot like this, um, and they're only into it from the waist up, it's readable. You can see it. It, it takes, you know, it, it helps to um, make the scene less 
less credible. Uh, the audience will not be drawn in as much. They won't feel as much empathy for the character. So even when you're when you're drawing a scene uh, of animation where the characters are only you know being seen from the waist up, you still have to think about what's going on down there. And um, a big way to make that stuff feel like it's really well involved is to just increase the highs and lows a bit more. There's a moment there with him as well um, that would benefit from a little more up-down movement. One is here when he does this movement and this gesture with the head and the arms coming down. If there was a little up-down in the weight shift right there to go along with it to lead into it, so up-down in the weight shift first, that would help to emphasize that gesture and it would emphasize his whole body's involvement with that gesture. And then, when he turns around here, if he's starting from a little bit of a lower position from the end of this gesture, and then comes up into this position, and then through this part, if he's coming from a higher position, so say his eyes maybe start up here instead of down, down lower where they are, so a little bit higher. Then when he swoops down, you know, you can really get more out of that whole motion. It almost feels like she's, she's coming at her like a bird of prey with the claws, you know. The way that his hands are positioned coming at her, he feels like he is, like it's talons. And you could really emphasize that swoop motion. If you, got, if you had a higher high with a, a little bit of a lower low as he comes towards her, um, and increase the amount of speed on the way down, and then have a slow out at the end. So right now his movement feels, the speed feels a little bit constant as he comes towards her. You could get more contrast in the speed by having him start out a little slower, speed up, you know, bigger spacing through here, and then slow out again at the end. Um, and increase the size and shape of those arcs as he's moving towards her so that you get that swoop, you know. And um, I think that would really help to emphasize this, this whole feeling on her part of feeling attacked and, and, and trapped. Um, there's also an issue with the cut here. I think that you would have a smoother cut if he was about here at the cut and then after it cuts he's continuing the turn right before he swoops down. So if that turn was continuing through the cut, then the cut would work a little more smoothly. Right now he gets to the end of this move, we cut, and then he starts a new move. So it really it, it makes the whole thing feel very separated. Those two shots, it feels like there's a little bit of a... Um, like a, uh, a little bit of a break or a barrier right there. So it's, it's not making the two scenes as smooth, uh, as flowing as smoothly as they could be. So if the motion was continued, the turning motion was continued over the shot, it would help to tie them together a little bit better. And... I think I might only have one or two more points. Um, just one, I think. OK. Um, the last thing that I have a note for here is uh, when he does this gesture here. Boom. His head and his hands are very, very synced together timing-wise. Oh, I did not. And while it's important to emphasize the did not, no, I did not. You know, it's important to emphasize that. Um, but you could still slightly break it up a little bit. So here's what I would recommend. I would recommend the weight shift, so the little up-down weight shift. So that's the first thing, um, the, the leading part of the action, you know, the, the up and down driven by the hips. Um, and then lower the shoulders, and then the hand comes down, and then the head is kind of the last thing to finish the overlap. No, I did not. So you get the overlap between all of those things. They're still gonna, it's still going to feel like uh, a one, you know, like the gesture is emphasizing that beat. It's that very important moment. Um, but 
it just will break up the action a little bit more so that it'll feel a little bit more organic, essentially. Um, and uh, it'll bring him to life that much more. The, again, it's just, you know, the added complexity will give the whole shot a little bit more interest because it's, it's a one-beat moment. Um, and that will help to just break things up a little bit more so that it, again, it just, you know, it gets rid of some of that, um, some of that sterile feeling and adds a little bit more organic to it. You killed him. No, I did not. I gave him life. I love her reaction at the end and the way that she backs away from him and, you know. Uh, that that feeling of, of disgust and revulsion. And again, sort of same thing there with her. Um, she had backed up against the wall. When he comes at her, if she's cowering lower at the beginning, so get her hips, you know, her hips are kind of there, get, it, get them down a bit lower at the beginning. So her head might be, you know, sort of there, somewhere lower. Um, and then as he comes towards her and she backs away, she can straighten up into this position where she ends up. Um, that's, you know, again, it's just another uh, moment where you can get bigger contrast for more emphasis. So even when you're doing a scene that has more realistic movement, you can still use more contrast to bring out more of the emotion. Fantastic stuff. I am just really uh, in awe of your drawing talent. Um, and your hand poses are beautiful, too. Love the hand poses. That's uh, something that I, uh, it, that's a really big, um, a really big thing for me. I, I hate <laughs> watching animation with poor hand poses. So it's something that I, I notice when it's done really well. It's, it's uh, it's a beautiful thing, so expressive. It adds so much to the shot. It really gives your characters a really big boost to their emotional performance. I love it. Well, congratulations again. You did a fantastic job. I love your, your work. Um, hope to see more from you going forward. And uh, have a really wonderful month, and good luck next time you enter. You're very talented. Cheers. See you later.